Hello, I'm Scott. Now, I've just noticed that this has come out in the UK. It's something I've had for a little while, but today we're going to look at Super Mario Maze DX Deluxe. Um, this is the Japanese version, so all I can really tell is the DX. I don't read Japanese at all, but as far as I can tell from looking at it, it is the same product. So let's have a look and see what's in the box. So let's open this up. This is obviously not a new copy. I would imagine that when you open it new, it's all in lots of lovely environmentally friendly plastic bags or something. But this will be the same as the kit that you get in the box as well. So the first thing we have is the control piece or joystick, whatever you'd like to call it. As you can see, this bit here corresponds to movement, left, right, up and down. And also it's got quite a nice little twist feature. So I'm sure there's some exciting little mechanisms going inside there. The top of the maze, then goes on top of there. You can see it fits nicely in there. You've got to make sure it goes the right way around. We've got these two bits at either side and this sort of back bit at the back. So that slots really neatly on there. We've then got one, two, three, four different maze pieces. Now I noticed that the claim on the Epoch um, advert on YouTube said that there are about a bajillion different combinations. Well, essentially that's telling you that you can put any of these mazes in, in any of these particular squares, this way, this way, you know, four different combinations in each square, and they can go in any of the squares. And so, of course, you can have lots of different combinations. It doesn't make a massive difference. I mean, quite a lot of the mazes, as you can see, it's almost like a, um, you know, it, it's very symmetrical, so not much difference if you were to turn it around, quite frankly. But anyway, we put our mazes in the squares like that, as you wish. It doesn't really matter how, and obviously, we're allowed to switch it around as we please. Once we have put our mazes in, then we've got a few other bits to put together. So the first bits are these little houses. So the flag's going to go up and down. So you just shove the flag in the bottom here and then lean out the top. And we're going to insert those in a second. So we have two of those. And then we have the tower in the middle. So we start um, at the bottom and then just build it up quite easily. Uh, do, 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 do fairly straightforward how it all goes in. And then Bowser on the top. And that kind of snaps in. And now we put the little Princess Daisy token or plain piece or whatever you want to call it on the top and that shuts. Um, we've also got a couple of little monsters um, we've got the uh, Winged Cooper, Para Cooper, that's his name, isn't it, I think. Um, can't remember what this dude's name is, but um, he's the guy who casts spells and turns blocks into things. Uh, we've got a Hammer Brother, or Hammer Cooper, depending on where you come from. And we've got a Boo. Boo indeed. So, let's put these back in the maze. This is very easy. This slots right in the middle, like that. Bosh. Secondly, these little houses. Um, what's going to happen is the ball's going to roll in and hit them. And so we're going to slot one of them here. And the other one just slots in there. And now the last thing that we've got to do is put our little monster tokens in the maze wherever you want. So you can see these orange bits here. Um, they will nicely clip into there wherever you want them to go. So we can put him in there. We'll put the boo around here. And just on our other side. Where are my bits gone? There we go. Um, we can sort that dude in there, and finally in there. And then we're pretty much ready to go. So here we have our finished maze, ready to go. And actually, no, not completely finished. We have this very useful um, bit of card. So if you really want to, um, and I think this is probably just done, done to make it look a bit nicer, you can slot it in the back here. And then every time you do that, it'll probably get a little bit more warped until finally uh, it falls off. So I never use it, but you know, that's what it looks like. Um, yeah, it's fine. I just take it out. Right, so now that we're all set up, let's play. The aim of the game is to firstly work your way around the maze on both sides, and then you have to flip up your little flags on your houses. And you do that by rolling the ball in there. And then the second thing we need to do is get up the, let's say, castle for argument's sake, 
defeat Bowser, rescue the princess. Obviously, you know, the princess needs to probably um, have a bit more of an agenda, but that's fine. She's going to be the damsel in distress. So you get a little silver ball, um, little ball bearing with it. And um, I'm pretty sure you get two of these with the game, just in case you inevitably lose one, but easy to replace, I'm sure. So very straightforward. We drop it in. Now I found that actually, um, you know, th this is pretty easy. Uh, you've noticed that actually Boo doesn't roll around very much. I don't think the marble is particularly um, heavy enough to be able to move him very much. And so Boo doesn't really cause much of an impediment. You know, it could probably do with, I don't know, a better bit of a mechanism. Anyway, what you can see is that you can go either way around the maze. Um, and so we're in this little bit now. And let's try and get it into the house. Easier said than done on this little bit, to be fair. It can be a little bit tricky. It's easy to control. Um, there we go. We've got one. And now, I mean, the slightly weird thing about this game is there's no real reason to go around the back if you don't want to. You can just come right back right around the front and go that way. Um, I don't really know how they could have changed this other than maybe them blocking off different ways. But let's go around the back for argument's sake, just for fun. So we're going to go around the back there. Ooh, hang on. You probably can't really see this. Not even going to go around the back. If you've ever played Screwball Scramble, which is arguably one of the best rolly bully mazy games ever, this is basically that. Oh, let's get, I think we're going to be okay now. There we go, around the back. Okay, so around the back here. And once again, I think that this bit here is meant to be a bit more spinny and therefore cause you a bit more of a problem. In reality, it doesn't really do that. Um, it's just kind of there. Um, but anyway, let's work our way around there. Oh, see, I thought I was good at this, but uh, not always. Oh, dead end. Because I'm not really paying that much attention. There we go, through there and back. Oh, Got to go back around the other way. Let's go back around the other way, that'll do. Okay, through there, around there. So, you know, it doesn't really present very much of an obstacle in the back there, to be fair. Um, but we're over here now, and so let's try and get to the house. Some of the mazes, see, this is actually quite good. It, you know, the spin, it's got just enough weight to make it go spinny, spinny, um, which is kind of handy. There we go, and you have to spin it, and we've raised the flag. Good news. So now we've raised the flag, we need to get back up the mountain slash castle, whatever, to defeat Bowser and rescue the princess, as is standard in the old Mario game. So, back round the boom maze, and as you can see here, I haven't actually shifted it down far enough because it's a bit of a tight fit, and into the castle. So this is actually quite a neat little piece of kit. We will end up going round and round the castle, like a teddy bear as it were, um, and it's pretty impressive uh, the way that this can actually ascend this much height. So I've just come in a tiny bit closer to try and give you a slightly better view. It's quite tricky because it runs underneath a lot of this, but essentially we're going in a spiral. And this is when you really get the benefit of the maze tilting quite far. Because all of a sudden we're up to this next corner. You can probably just about see. And round again. And you can see that we've arrived here. Now, once again, it's a little bit tricky to see, I'm afraid, because we're kind of very much inside the mechanism, but we keep on doing that. There is a point here which you can start potentially falling out, as we've done there. We'll try that again, shall we? Try and getting that solid ball out. Okay, oh, I'm going to go around in circles again, so you'll excuse me. Ah, oh, you see? So what we don't want to do is fall out there. There's actually... In, I've got a, the attachment for it, which doesn't work very well, but um, you can put another maze on top here, which obscures the entire view and slightly defeats the point, but still it's kind of cool that it exists. So there we go, back inside. Now I think that we're almost at the point of being ready to come up the top. There we go, so it's actually just appeared up the top here, and if I tilt it that way, you'll just about be able to see, hopefully, that the ball has arrived at the top. So we're up at the top here now. We've come round the spiral a couple of times. I mean, you know, there are a few little dangers. You can fall out. The last one is if you go forwards and then you go the wrong way, you go back down the drain there and you just have to come up again. Um, but the intention here is to now knock out Bowser and rescue the princess so we can go up and then it's going to roll down here and then a nice clean jerk and well, hey, we have rescued the princess. 
and then we can just tilt it and the ball will come out like that. So that's the main aim of the game. Well, that's the only aim of the game, quite frankly. So what do we think of Super Mario Maze DX Deluxe? It's a really interesting piece of kit and it's quite fun. It's very well made. I think the plastic's very solid. Um, it's a little bit disappointing, perhaps, that when you receive it, it's just... It, it's a, just a maze that's got some Mario stickers on. Now, there are some things that we can do to rectify this, notably by spending more money, which is what Epoch have become quite good at in ha making things that plug into other things. Um, there's a sort of Bowser, Talons, uh, Bowser Tower balance game um, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but that has also come out in the UK now. And with the Bowser Tower Balance game, for want of a better description, um, you can get these little um, figures. So actual representations. So, so this is Magic Cooper. I pretty much, I'm just sure, remembered that. Okay, so Magic Cooper. Um, I've got a Boo. There's a Hammer Brother, a Paratrooper, and also a Princess Daisy. Okay. Um, and it comes with other things as well. And you get these, there's the other sort of weird little balance games as well that cost um, about £10 at the moment that are generally fairly dreadful. I would only get them for the figures. But what we can do is we can swap out the little plastic, you know, little plastic things that are just kind of there. That's your Mario sticker. And all of a sudden we've got an actual 3D figure. So that can kind of make the game come to life a little bit more. You're obviously still rolling a ball bearing around a track, which is fair enough. But the fact is that all of a sudden the Mario theming does become a lot more prominent. And these are all designed, the Epoch games all seem to be designed to fit these different figures um, together into different games. Which I think is pretty gunning because I think quite a lot of people will want to do this. Magic Cooper, Magic Cooper, Magic Cooper. As I'm pretty sure that's what his name is. Okay. I can't remember if they all come with the Bowser, with the, um, Bowser Tower job or something else. But anyway. And actually, this doesn't fit very well. I've got a Princess Daisy. No, Princess um, Peach, sorry. Not Daisy. I don't all like Daisy Rich. Unfortunately, she doesn't fit in the thing very well, which is really irritating because it would be really nice to have a Princess Peach figure um, at the top to rescue. Um, I mean, I can kind of push it closed, um, but look, she's just going to peer over the back. Although, now I think about it, she will go in the back there. And so, but the problem is that she, there is a slot for her to sit in the back, but then she's just kind of there. It would be really nice if just sort of very exposed. So yes, it does go in, but I don't know, it doesn't really have exactly the effect that I would really want. Anyway, um, you know, it's a really interesting piece of kit. It's fun. I think, you know, there probably is a positive in terms of the fact that you can't really lose at it. You just have to spend a bit more time on it. Um, and so, you know, I think that's really positive for people. And I said, there, there are clear goals. You've got to go this way and then you've got to go that way and you get a choice and you can put the mazes wherever you want. Um, and that's really nice as well. And obviously, you know, you can turn this bit around as well. You can just make your entrance, for example. You might want to make the entrance at the back. It loses a bit of something because it means you're staring at the back of Daisy. Um, sorry, Peach. So I don't know why I keep calling her Daisy. It means you're staring at the back of Peach um, all the way around. But at the same time, it might give you a bit more incentive to go around the back. If that's where you're going to do all the rest, if that's where you're going to go into the castle and do all your rescuing. So, I mean, I think it's a really well made piece of kit. Would I pay £25? Well, I did pay £25 for it. So I guess the answer is probably yes. Um, is it good for a Mario person who enjoys a maze? Absolutely yes. Would I get it over Screwball Scramble, which is still after about 40 odd years in the shops? Absolutely not. Screwball Scramble remains the king of ball bearing games. And I will fight anybody who wishes to argue that. Um, but at the same time, I think that if you have a Mario fan, I think that this is a really, really nice starter kit to um, to get into these um, these different Mario toys. Now, I said Japan actually has quite a number of different ones of these. Um, and there are tiny ones and there are some bigger ones and different designs and stuff like that. But this is the one that is out in the UK at the moment. And actually you can find it um, on Japanese sites as well. So it's it's well robust. It will stand up to plenty of play. As I said the only irritant for me is just that most of it is basically stickers. Um, if you don't buy extra bits to really buy into all of these things, um, then essentially what you're looking at is a maze game, which is still pretty good, admittedly, uh, but a maze game that's got a whole bunch of Mario stickers on. So, you know, I give it a thumbs up because I like Mario and I really like maze games. But as I said, go for Scrooble Scramble first. Um, if you like the maze bit in Scrooble Scramble, definitely um, consider giving this one a go. 
So I hope you enjoyed watching this occasionally for actually shambolic video. Um, but I really wanted to actually talk about this because I found that there was nobody else who could really show me what the whole deal with this was. Yes, some little adverts and there are some things in Japanese. Um, there's a really good guy called Daisuke who's got loads of wonderful ball bearing games. He's got his own YouTube channel, but unfortunately I don't speak Japanese. No idea um, what much of it's saying. So I really wanted to talk about it in English. Um, just for the benefit of anybody who might want to have a look. So hopefully I'll do a few more videos on other ball bearing games or other Epoch Mario games as well, of which there are, it turns out, quite a few, some of which seem to be coming over to um, uh, the UK and the United States. And um, hopefully I'll be able to show you those soon. Thank you.